Hey, what's good, everybody? Thank you very much for checking me out. I am very glad that today you are here, but there's one thing I would need a favor from you. When I check my analytics, I realize that the majority of you who watches my YouTube channel haven't subscribed yet. So I'll be very much happy if you just click on the subscription button so that you become part of this beautiful family so that any day I drop a video, you will be the first to have to watch and definitely to share with your friends. Um, I know that some of you have been watching my videos lately and you know my my location right now. Currently in Canada, just for some few days, you know, hanging around, meeting people, having a different thoughts and then, you know, lifestyle. I mean, I am here just to study and know how things are done here. But I'll definitely go back and tell my people that, hey, when you travel, go learn and bring whatever you've learned to the motherland so that we can build the motherland together. All right, I made a video about society, how society determines what we do. But I say that, I, I mean, I had a lot of beautiful comments, like I mentioned in my earlier video or my previous video, that you know all the comments that came were like something that really touched me. And big ups to every one of you who commented, whether it was towards you know my topic or it was just you know around the topic. I really appreciate it. But I have someone here with me. Uh, he's a brother of mine. We've been connecting for uh, yes, over 20 years. And I will let him introduce himself. But there's a discussion that we want to have. I mean, he watched the video and he was like, Echo, there's a lot I, I also want to share because I am privileged to have traveled, you know, from Ghana to, to, to London, to the UK, England for some years. And I can really understand what you were trying to say. But before that, He's done something that I want him to talk about. So I'm going to bring my brother on. Um, hello, Chairman. Hello. Echo. How, are you, How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, all right. We I'm give doing very well. well. Thank you. All right. Great. So first of all, introduce yourself to my subscribers and then tell us what you do as Michael. Yes, yeah, so my name is Mickey, Mickey AJ, and if you've been around the internet um, and the Ghanaian content, you will know that I also have a, well, not everyone, um, I also have a YouTube channel called Mickey AJ, and what I do is I am a British soldier, and um, I've been serving nearly 18 years now, um, but I am, so I've lived in UK since 2005, and I am planning my way back to Ghana to come and live um, is so close and is so certain that my wife and two kids have already moved to Ghana and been living in Ghana for about two and a half years now. So yeah, this is the nutshell of what I do. Okay, beautiful. Um, I know people will say, hey, you have your kids and um, wife in Ghana and you are there alone. Anyway, we will talk about that. Now, um, you, you moved to the UK 2005. I think um, that was a year after I completed senior high school. So you've lived there for a long time as a British mm -hmm. army. What made you move from Ghana to the UK? Was it anything okay. personal or there was, like I said, it was a societal feeling that, hey, if you go, you will make it. Or if you go, life will be easy. What, what made you move? Okay, so for some reason, as a kid, I've never been moved by society. For me, it was, everything I do was about my survival. So when I was growing up, I was very ambitious. I always wanted to be the best in class. But one thing I realized was in Ghana growing up, if you are not from a privileged family, it made it difficult to even go to the secondary schools that you wanted. For some reason, I always wanted to go to a boys' school. And... So in Kumasi, we have uh, Opokuare, we have Prempe College, and then we have Kumasi High and other ones. I wanted to go to one of these, but because I went to the government school and in Kumasi, we call it Saito. Um, yeah. It was weird that no matter how much you learn, you will never get the grades to go to the um, Prempe Colleges, the Opokuare's. So I decided, even though I was good in school, I decided to go to 
Kumase High. I'm not saying Kumase High is, is a lower school, but I thought that it was within my reach. Yeah. Anyway, what got me a little bit bitter about Ghana was I got grade 11. And then on that day, I went to seek admis admission with my mother. Uh, we got there and there was um, a notice saying that the cutoff point is eight. So I couldn't, I couldn't go in. And then later, I met a friend. I couldn't get into the school. And then later, I met a friend who had grade 28. So I had 11. He had 28. And he was going to that school. I asked him, and he said, oh, because his parents were able to dip their hands in their wet pockets. And oh. that was when I realized that um, the odds were a bit stuck um, mm -hmm. against me. So at that young age, I said, you know what? I love Ghana so much. I see myself building something in Ghana, but I think I'll have to leave Ghana to <laughs> go and find myself, to go and build something substantial and then come back. And so since I left Ghana, it's always been my plan to come back to Ghana with some, some substance. Um, and for me, it's not about living extravagant just being able to raise capital to afford the basics that I need to make the impact that I wanted to make. So that is why I left Ghana. Well, so I would say that it was a personal choice to, to, to move because you felt that you needed that opportunity to, to be able to afford what you can afford for yourself. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people say that they want to travel to, to the West, learn, and then bring whatever they've 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 learned to develop Ghana. Do you think that Ghana from from 2005 when he left till now, do you think Ghana has this supportive system for people who are even there now, or people who have learned to to who have left to to the West to learn the, the you know the way of do, doing things and are coming back to implement what they've learned? Do you think? I mean, because you, you you read the news, I mean, you're still connected to Ghana anyway. Do you still, do you think we Ghana has the system to support you or others who have gone out there to learn and want to bring it back to Ghana or to Africa? Um, it's a very good question. So for me, I feel like um, if you think positive and you think negative, you are always going to be right. Um, in UK, I've been here since 2005. I've been working for the government for 18 years, and I still can find negative um, mm -hmm. things to say that the system does not support someone, an immigrant, but there are immigrants who's worked and they've made the impact over here. And the same way that they, we have um, the Chinese, we have the Asians, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of experts who are thriving in Africa and in Ghana. So I think that if you are able to acquire the substance and if you are able to acquire the knowledge that is needed, you can make it your way. Remember, nothing good come easy. So wherever yeah. you try to make a good impact, it's still going to be difficult. It will feel like the stack is against you, but with determination, I think you'll be able to do it. So at a glance, if you look at it, it will seem like Ghana don't have the systems to do it, but people are doing it. You just mm -hmm. have to learn their ways and mm -hmm. then you have to replicate it and make it work for you. All right, beautiful. Now back to the main topic. Um, you 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 moved to the UK. You got married there. You had kids. Are your kids Ghanaian or they are British? Okay, so um, when I left, when I left Ghana, um, I went back to get married to my Ghanaian Kumase. We all grew up, so we actually grew up <laughs> next to each other. So my childhood sweetheart. I went back hey, and take it, I take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> shout out yeah, to, shout um, out to your childhood sweetheart. Anyway, yeah, that is it. Yeah, um, for me, there's something about me. I think um, when I went back to pick her, I think that the first question I asked her um, when I decided to court her, I said, "Are you seeing someone?" And she said, um, "No, I'm single." And that was one of the best thing ever happened to me. I I, I find it difficult. Um, I think that especially being an Ashanti from Kumasi, um, we have a way of living that I think, and I thought, I need to 
choose my words carefully, but mm -hmm. I thought it was an Ashanti woman who would bring the best in me. So okay. I was happy to live because when we sit there and we eat Gary, we understand it because she, she right. knows where I came from and mm -hmm. I also know where she came from. So I went back for my childhood sweetheart and then we had kids together. You ask him if my kids are British Pretty or Ghanaian, really. they are they are they are dual citizens so when they okay. all of them were born here in middlesbrough but they are all okay. dual citizens yeah all right beautiful um you know as a Ghanaian and as an african everybody wish to travel outside to live there have kids there and give them a better life and education why did you decide to bring your children and your wife back to ghana and you are there alone. Why did you decide to bring? Um, my concern is about the kids. Because like I said, when you read, when you watch videos, people who have traveled outside will say, I want a better life for my kids. And mm. in our mindset, a better life, it's, it's relative. It could be a better life in Ghana, Africa, or a better life out there. But most Africans will say a better life is out there. Why did you decide to bring your kids back to Ghana? Okay, so before I answer this question, I want to say it's a million dollar question. A lot of people ask me this question and it's because of, you are right, because of kids that are a lot of people have the zeal to go back and make an impact back home in Africa and in Ghana, but because of their kids' education, a lot of people, I won't say are stuck, but they choose to live a, abroad in the West. Um, but I will say this, that everybody has got a stage in their life that mm. uh, and it, it depends every stage that you are depends on the decisions that you make so me saying that i'm taking my kids to ghana might suit me but i might not suit everyone but yeah. for me these are the reasons why one mm. my kids living in ghana they are still british so they've got dual um, passport so they have the ghanaian passport and they have the british passport if okay. anything happens, right, they can come to UK whenever they want. But one thing I'm happy that our family can have is the best of both worlds. Okay. One, why did I take my kids? One is because it's always been my plan to go back to Ghana. And okay. I feel that I plan my life in such a way that at this point, I am more useful and even economically, I, it's better for me to be in Ghana than to be in UK. Okay. But I had to, within my plan, I had to come to UK first. So knowing that I want to go to Ghana because my impact and the things that I want to do is in Ghana, I had to think about my kids' education as well. So mm -hmm. it made sense that I, I let my wife go first Mm -hmm. You see, my wife go first with the kids because I didn't want them to get stuck in the British um, education because okay. they get to a bit where they have to do GCSE. You have to wait for them to finish this G GCSE and then they'll have to do their A-level. And then it's difficult for them to go to Ghana, jeopardizing my dreams of going to Ghana. That's one. Now, somebody will say, am I not being selfish following my dreams and putting my kids education in jeopardy now when we say education there's two types of education we have formal education and we have informal education and i think it was jim ron or someone who said that um formal education will earn you a living but informal yeah. education will earn you a fortune mm -hmm. so taking my kids with me we have something that we're building i want to emphasize more on their informal are there not formal education in, in Ghana? There are good schools in Ghana. Most of us studied in Ghana before we came here and we were yeah. still able to thrive. So if I'm able to give them even up to university in Ghana, but then informally they watch mom and dad building a business and it's going to be a family business and okay. I'm going to teach them street life, mm -hmm. right? The streets, street smart. So you mm -hmm. can be a first class student but if you are not streetwise informally, you can still be lacking behind. That's why there's a saying that the A students are working for what? The C students. Yeah. You got know I me. Mean? So that is one reason why I'm not scared of taking my kids with me to Ghana to build with them. And two is resilience. Mm -hmm. As I, the best thing that happened to me 
before coming to UK is spending about 21, 22 years of my life in Ghana, knowing how it feels to sleep yeah. without food, yeah. knowing how it feels to not celebrate your birthdays, to not go on holidays every day, right? Mm -hmm. So when I come here, now I spot opportunities that people who were born in the West cannot find. I'll tell you the story. One day when I was a young soldier in Germany, I was sat there watching TV, it was a Friday evening, and one of the lads, one of the boys, soldiers, came in crying. It was his 25th birthday and he was crying. And I asked him, why are you crying? And he told me that, it's his birthday and none of the guys wants to come out for a drink with him. And that broke him. I'm sat there thinking, I've never celebrated my birthday. Yeah. And at that point, if I called one of my uncles and I asked them, or even my friends, what my birthday was, I, I, I can tell you none of them would have remembered my birthday. Mm -hmm. But that didn't make me depressed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people born, majority of kids growing up in the West, when they are hit with minor problems in life, mm -hmm. break down. Yeah. That's why there's a lot of depression in the West, even though they've got everything. So I just want my kids to go and get that life as well. Another one is the culture. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians and Africans, we have this rich culture, right. which is good for the family system, right? That when you come to the West, sometimes it's being broken a bit. The mm -hmm. way we speak to our elders, mm -hmm. the way we, we, we carry ourselves, yeah. even body counts. Trust me, you go, you go to, um, when I was growing up, when I was a teenager and you slept with a woman, she will tell you, you will have to marry me. A woman wasn't going to avail herself to you until yeah. you promised to marry her. And then you travel <laughs> to other places. And it's just, you know, one night stand. I would, oh, oh, yeah, I just fancy this person. So I saw right. them and they'll right. be collecting body counts like that. There are a lot of things in the family system where our fathers and our, our, our mothers played their natural yeah. role. You know, when, let me, let me change this into marriage. When the Bible said that the man is going to sweat before feeding his family and the woman is going to have pains in birth. Mm -hmm. It was it was an expression of a man. I'm giving you a testosterone. You are going to be the head of the house. Look after your wife and your kids. And the woman, even in sex, a woman open, right? And they, and mm -hmm. the, and a man will give the love, right? And then mm -hmm. the woman will turn it into a child, something good. So a woman is like an amplifier, right? We are the microphone. We come as raw. And then the woman will take it. It goes through the amplifying system and the sound comes out. Comes really. out. These are some of the things, right? A woman and a man are not the same, but they all have a unique strength, mm -hmm. right? When mm -hmm. it comes together and we all need each other to make it work. And these are the culture. This is the beliefs that in Africa we have. And sometimes when you go to some Western countries, they don't have. They don't it have. creates a lot of anarchy so these some of these things is what i want my kids to learn and then another thing i've mentioned resilience our culture and another thing is i've got some notes here um, yeah sure and 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 before 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 you come in i mean just read through your note before you come in i made a post today and it's, it looks like it's exactly where you are where you are you know talking about i mean the culture the family system in Ghana, you know, I, I made a post today talking about how Africans do not send their older folks to what do you what do you guys even call it there? Is it yeah, we call it um, care homes, care homes for people uh, to or take some people people. call but it adult homes, adult homes. But here in Ghana, you barely have that institution that I'm sending my mother to somewhere for some no. They are always with us, and they are with us because there's a list of things that I've, I I made mention, and one of them is you know giving us that knowledge, that experiences they have had before us. But that is another thing we will talk about. But that is one thing that I really love to also share with other diasporans or other people all over the world to know about how our family system 
is like. So you can go on with yours here. So another another reason, what, what you said is really good. Um, yeah, keeping the elderly. And I remember my wife's grand, grandma, uh, may her soul rest in peace. She guided us so much. When my mom yeah. died and my dad died, she told us how to do things. And everybody came to us, right? And they were like, where did you guys learn all these from? She was just in the background telling us, at this point, you have to cook this. At that point, mm -hmm. you have to give this person that. And everything looks so nice and exquisite. So that is why we keep them. So another reason why, too, that uh, my kids are in Ghana is building wealth. When you want to build wealth, like most of us, and I think a lot of the Black community is like that, we do not build on our parents' wealth. So wealth, passing down wealth is a little bit of a scarce commodity in our community. So we normally build from scratch. And for you to build on scratch, you need to learn to be able to, one, be disciplined, and two, to be so disciplined that you can, it's okay for you to be able to afford something but not have it. Mm -hmm. So our society, if you don't have something, if you don't have a Lamborghini, if you don't have a Range Rover, they think that you cannot afford it, Yeah. right? But we, the fact that you will be able to have that resilience to say that it's not the time, it's not practicable for mm -hmm. me to buy an iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. It's an mm -hmm. act. And it's something that if you are able to have, you will start, you are on your way to become rich. Because rich. the Bible says that if you are able to get something to eat and a place to lay your head, let that become enough for you. But when I say make that become enough for you, it doesn't mean you need to have a scarcity mindset, but you just need to have your priority right. So being able to say, to know that, oh, I'll give you an example. When I was dating my wife, um, I, one day we were going to visit um, my in-laws and we were happy because we didn't have our kids. So we were happy to take Trotro. Those who don't know what Trotro is, is the old mm -hmm. buses in Africa. In Kenya, I think they call it Matatu. Um, Matatu. In Ghana, we call it, yeah, we call it Trotro, Trotro right? Mm -hmm. And this Trotro stopped in front of my in-laws, right? And remember, I've left, I've, I've visited from UK, so I'm a bugger, right? Yeah. Trying to... You don't know what bugger is. Tell them, tell them who yeah. a bugger is. So bugger is someone who has traveled outside. Yeah, someone who's lived outside. And when you come, you, you're you not even drinking the local bottled water. You're drinking <laughs> um, the Voltaic and stuff like that. Yeah. I was holding my Peñi de Peña. I was holding my sachet water, shilling water, um, whatever you call it, right? And mm -hmm. we alighted from Trotro. At this mm -hmm. point, it didn't it, it, it didn't mean that I could not afford it, but I was happy not to have it because I knew that wasn't the time because I was investing. So a lot of people born in the West, if they don't go on holidays, if they mm -hmm. don't get the, 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 the latest iPhones, iPhones, it costs it costs deep depression. If they right. don't have a good wedding, if they don't have a bridal shower, if they don't have baby shower, they are going into deep depression. But people who grew up in Africa, these things are not our culture. So we mm -hmm. can actually save money and not plummet into depression and right. save until we can afford to use that. So if my kids go out, they know how it feels to, mm -hmm. when they go to Ghana and they know how it feels to sleep with no food. They've seen people, it's not like they are not sleeping, uh, they are not sleeping with food, but they okay. see people struggling. Yeah. Now they can make those sacrifices without feeling that they are missing out. So that is one thing. That is one thing. And the ultimate thing to why I send my kids and my family is for my wife to pave the way. So I am going to go into walk into a business after I leave UK. And again, my kid is was um a mild autistic. And this is not me giving um health advice but i thought the social intervention that we have in ghana also mm -hmm. will play a role and i'm telling you now my my son is okay and he's talking and he okay. is fitting in he wow. is not being social awkward because wow. the society actually bring you in so these right. are the reason why 
I sent my family back home. Wow, great, beautiful. Um, your your the the last but one. You're talking about generational wealth, where mm -hmm. we can whatever you've built, you need to let your children learn the processes, and then continue. But in Africa, you realize that if I have done it, then I will tell my child find a way to do yours. Mm -hmm. That is what people talk about. But like when it comes to the Western world, you realize that because um, there was one time when T.I. and other businessmen came to Cape Coast, one man was talking and he was one of the he's one of the richest guys in the U.S. And then in his conversation, he said during the conversation, he brought he called his son to come in and said, OK, I believe that Africans should learn to, you know, have that generational wealth creation in their minds. So he made mention that now this my son here is a general manager of my business. And I know when I pass, he's going to take over. And I've told him how to teach his children to take over. And that is not what we do in Africa. So it's, it's here, it's there. And I love the fact that you have learned this and then you're going to inculcate it into your I remember we had a conversation and you advised me that. I was, I was telling you, yo, I want to move. I want to do this. And you were like, don't only move try to teach your children how to take over when you are not there. So I love that. Now, um, do you know so let me, to, to say something to that, to say something mm -hmm. to that, sorry to cut you short. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that is killing us Africans. I have a mm -hmm. cousin who is a businessman, a business mogul in Ghana, a successful businessman. But now he wants to come and live in the UK so that he will send his, he will send his kids to UK to have a good education. You've mm -hmm. been able to build multiple businesses in Ghana. Right. What education is better than teaching your kids to do that? Why do you want them to go into the school system, right? Mm -hmm. To come and get a job. Yeah. So that is one thing. One thing that we don't do well is succession plan. So right. all we do is we get the money and then we spoil our kids. We think that, oh yeah, I'm going to give my kids what I did not have thinking mm -hmm. that we are doing them a great service. No, we are doing them a disservice. Let them mm -hmm. learn the ways. How were you able to do it? Give yeah. them positions in your businesses and let them also learn. Because if you if if people are saying that, oh yeah, you're taking your kids to Ghana, there is no jobs in Ghana. Well, if I'm building apartments and I'm renting it out, if I'm building a guest house and I'm renting it out, I'm not going to take them with me, no. I'm right. going to show them how to look after that and build on top of that. So mm -hmm. it's time we have a blueprint of how we made it. We tweak it and then we give it to our kids. And that's what the Trumps are doing. That's how mm -hmm. the Rockefellers are doing, you see. So mm -hmm. it's something that we need to think. We should not think for us. Again, I always say that as soon as a Ghanaian or an African become rich, they want to get more women and they want to have kids all over the place. And they are thinking that their money paying for the fees of the kids is enough. No, yeah. you have to be in the kids' life and give them the nuggets that you had. You give them the nuggets. Thinking that you're paying the kids' school fees and, oh, yeah, I've paid their school fees. I've built one house for them. It's okay. No, 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 no. no you're no, going no, to no. go and they are going to fall into the system and they are going to just be paupers. You know what I mean? So we, it's time that we don't think about ourselves and our pleasures. Yeah. We need to think about when we are gone. I'm thinking, like, moving my kids to Ghana, I'm thinking, okay, if I drop dead right now, how are my kids going to go on? How yes, is my wife right. going to go on? And mm -hmm. that is something we need to start thinking about. And it all comes about delayed gratification, not thinking about today, but thinking about the next generation. Awesome. And, you know, delayed gratification you know, putting all this um, energy, all these fancy stuff somewhere and focusing on what you have to do for later. If you want to enjoy that one later, that is fine. During your conversation, you made mention that people get stressed, like the brother who was crying because he couldn't get um, his 25th birthday. Charlie, me, I don't, I don't even remember when I have to think of my birthday. Because nah, I've never I've never celebrated one. No, 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 Because it's like I feel, and like I always say, um, my my subscribers are just watching and they are, you know, absorbing whatever we are saying. Most of these things are relative, but some of them are for real. You have to know, right? I remember one time 
I had a visitor in my house. She's from the UK. And then she wanted to brush her teeth. And then she opened the tap. And then she, you know, when you open the tap, you have to put the, you know, wet the thing. And then she was brushing while the water was flowing. And she was brushing. I was like standing there, just watch. I was like, what do you think you are doing? <laughs> here. It's the waste culture. It's, it's a yeah. waste culture. Even here, I have seen it somewhere. Like, come on, turn off the thing. When you are ready, turn it on and then use it. Now, before we end this conversation, you 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 mentioned that you watched one of my videos about society having impact on the decisions that we take and everything. What is your take on that? Yes. Um, so when you said that, um, I would say society, society um, does not, it's not everything that society will get you. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not all your decision that is based on societal um, judgment or uh, whatever they put it's on you. I think uh, in the end of the video, you mentioned something like, I, it's, it, you've got to a point where you've been working for 18 years and you feel like you don't have anything to, to show for it. Mm -hmm. Now it's about time that you need to do something. You, you, you're not coming abroad or you're not looking at avenues because everybody is doing it. You're doing yeah. it because of your survival, right. right? And that is good. But there are some people, when they are making those decisions, they get society to infiltrate. That is where it becomes bad. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember I told you that we have to build delayed gratification and that if you are always looking at society, what society say, then you want to keep up with the Joneses. And that right. is when it's a problem. So don't let society um, pressure you to do anything. I mean, when I say that I'm going to Ghana, a lot of people are saying, hey, we are all coming to UK. Why are you yeah, going to you Ghana? are living. <laughs> I'm looking at myself, my survival. You get what I mean? Yeah. I'm going against society. And I'm not doing that just to say, give to society the two fingers. No, I'm doing that for my survival. If you right. think it's okay for you to travel abroad mm -hmm. and it's okay for your survival, mm -hmm. I would say do it. Do but it. Do it with a plan. Do yeah. it for your practicability and right. not for society. That is what I wanted to tell you. All right, beautiful. Before we go, I need to give you that opportunity to sell the product that you have. I know you're you are doing real estate, Charlie. You're doing it big. And just tell us a little bit about your your real estate ideas, what you are putting up, and what you think you are ready to serve the people with, uh, who, whoever is coming to Ghana. Uh, what are you into? What are you doing now that you think people should know? Yeah. Okay, um, so there's a lot of things in the pipeline that is happening. Um, so one, well, we've got an apartment that we've rented out. Um, it's always, it's always, yeah, we, we we rent apartment out. But one thing that is not completed yet, but we're thinking of doing is a guest house. But this mm -hmm. guest house is going to be for people who want to trace and come and see the motherland. So okay. after, so we have, we will have apartments in Accra. Uh, mm -hmm. in Brekusu for people who go to Accra. But the one that is on my heart is the one in Ejosu for people who want to see the Ashanti region, Kumasi, okay. come okay. to Menshia to see the Asante Hene and mm -hmm. stuff. So we are going to put something together where you go to Menshia, you go and see Kumasi because Ghana is not only Accra, you know, we've got Kumasi as well. So we are putting up something where you will have a cozy place to lay your head and then we will take you around Kumasi. But watch this space. All right, watch this space. All right, thank you very much, bro. So um, um, so far, so good. I'm enjoying the weather here anyway. That is another thing. So thank you very much for being on my channel. Um, so Mickey is also running a YouTube channel. I'll be very much happy if you could go. I'll put his um, link in the description Go out there, put up a comment, uh, follow him, and let's share this together. There is more we can share among ourselves as Africans and how we can move Africa together. Charlie, can I adv think advise you one quick? Yeah. Can I advise you? Maybe it will be a good thing for people. I don't know. Yeah, I know sure. you are at the stage that you are thinking, um, should I travel abroad or not? And uh, mm -hmm. if you decide to travel abroad, please, what I'll tell you is, don't close your your your, your door back. Um, okay. 
Uh, it's nowadays living abroad can be a bit difficult because you get the money. People will change the money into cities and it looks it mm. looks a lot. But they forget that what you will pay in a month for your rent and your taxes is like somebody's 10 years rent in Ghana. So to be able to own something, Africans, we need to have the mentality of owning something and building something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll be able to do it abroad, but you can do it in Ghana. And when you are building, don't build a mansion. Try and build apartments, something that you can rent out, two, okay. three bedroom apartments and rent it out. And just keep building something back home if you can. Because at some point, the weather is going to feel different in your bones as you mm -hmm. grow. The work mm -hmm. is not going to be as easy. And yeah. the best thing you can do is to make both worlds habitable for yourself and your kids because the way the world is going is a gift if you can live in two places right easily so yeah right. that is what i'll tell you travel with a plan try and leave some of your money and invest back home all right beautiful i love that i mean this is big this is huge and i know a lot of people will attest the fact that they the the advice that you've just given is like a million dollar advice and we thank you so much for this advice and thank you for being on my channel. No, thank you for having me. All right, peace. Peace.